chapter 2 Flexural Analysis and Design In this chapter, you will be introduced with the design and analysis of pre-stressed concrete beam subjected to flexural load. That means it deals with the moment resistance of the pre-stressed member. This slide outlines the design steps for the pre-stressed member, which include the analysis of the load, assuming the material property, losses and other specifications, initial sizing, which include the estimations of the minimum section modulus of the section, propose a suitable sections and determine its geometrical properties. The section modulus of the proposed sections need to be at least greater than the one estimated during the initial sizing. Next, you need to construct the stress plot diagram and derive the equations of the pre-stress member subjected to load. Different arrangement of the tendons as well as different external load will lead to different stress plot diagram and the equations to predict the stress within the member. Then, based on the derived equations, draw the Magnol diagram. The Magnol diagram will give a regions of acceptable degree of pre-stressing load P and eccentricity, which as long as the proposed P and E are within the feasible area, the pre-stressed member is presumably passed. Then, from the Magnol diagram, Determine appropriate P and E as well as the tendon profile for the pre-stressed member. The proposed P, E and the tendon profile needs to be within the feasible area of the Magnol diagram. Next, you need to propose the tendon size and number and check the checking capacity as well as the centroid. It is so that it complies to the proposed E as well as comply to the proposed P. In general, the checking capacity should not be exceeded and tendon may not necessarily use up to its full capacity. Based on the proposed P, the number and size of the tendons can be determined. Next, you will need to check for the stress limits. The stress within the members is calculated from the stress plot diagram and the equation derived. There will be limits for the compressions and tension. Based on the P and E as well as tendon and its tendon profile proposed, and in accordance to the assumed material property losses and other specifications on basis of the proposed geometrical of the sections calculate the actual stress acting on the member and the stress need to be fall within the limits of the concrete in compressions and tension for this calculation step here it is on the basis of the serviceability limit state where the factor of safety is used as 1.0. As we have discussed in the previous chapter, the design of the pre-stress member usually starts with the serviceability limit state. Until we have designed the sections to pass the serviceability limit state, then we can proceed for the ultimate limit state. The serviceability limit state analysis is basically the stress analysis. We need to ensure that under service conditions, all the stress developed within the members have to fall within the limit so that the member do not fail. Next, you will proceed with the calculations of the transmission length 
this information will be required later when you need to analyze the losses. After the serviceability limit state, you need to check for the ultimate limit state. The factor of safety will be 1.35 for GK and 1.5 for QK. You will need to check and design for the ultimate moment and check and design for the shear reinforcement as well as the torsional resistance. It is noted that the pre-stressed member that pass in the serviceability limit states based on the tendon provided may not necessarily pass in the ultimate moment. If the provider pre-stressing loads is adequate to sustain the ultimate moment, no additional reinforcement bar will be required. However, if the provider tendon is insufficient to generate resistance to the ultimate moment, there will be reinforcement bar provided. You will need to check also for the shear reinforcement as pre-stressing load in fact is actually beneficial to the member in terms of the shear resistance. Normally, we will need to check the shear resistance of the member itself without considering the reinforcement. If the shear resistance of the member itself is adequate, only nominal shear reinforcement bar is required. However, if the shear resistance of the member is inadequate, you will require shear reinforcement. Next, you will need to design for the torsion and also the combined conditions for the shear and torsion. Theoretically, you will have to make sure the shear resistance pass, torsion resistance pass, and the combined conditions of shear and torsion pass. Next, we'll be checking for the deflection. It is important to ensure that the member do not endure excessive deflection. The equations for the deflection check will be similar to the one in the reinforced concrete design in Eurocode 2. After that, you will need to calculate the losses. The losses involve the short-term losses and the long-term losses. At the early stage of the analysis and design, the losses are being assumed. However, after you have done the checking of the stress and also checking of the ultimate limit state, you need to calculate for the exact value of the losses. The calculations of the losses is rather tedious and there are a series of equations to be used. And this is the reason why the losses here are normally assumed at the early stage. The purpose is to simplify the proposing section analysis. After you have determined the losses, you will need to compare the actual losses with the assumed value here. Theoretically, you will have to ensure the losses of the actual value and the assumed value are to be similar. The assumed value are not to be too far away from the actual value. So as the proposed P and E based on the Magner diagram produced is valid. If the differences between the losses of the actual and assumed value are significant, the stress check pass here might not necessarily pass in the actual case. With that, you will need to check again for the stress limit. This time, you will need to use the actual value of the losses to compute the stress acting on the member and to check against its limits. Lastly, you might need to check for other serviceability requirements as appropriate, such as the concrete cover, the side surface reinforcement bars, minimum and maximum spacing of reinforcement bar, and others. What you see here 
the design and analysis of a precisely member is long and tedious. It is basically made of three main parts, which are the serviceability limit state, ultimate limit state, and also the serviceability limit state for the losses. For a pre-stressed member to be passed, you need to ensure all the aspect design pass. Failure in any aspect may lead to failure of the member.